Okay, so one thing before I start the mouth animation tutorial is that in this tutorial, I won't be really explaining the coloring portion or the masking portion that much. And if you want, like, if you don't know how to, like, really do coloring and masking when I animate, um, you could just look at my previous video or, or like, any of my previous animation videos and I explain there, like, how to mask and color um mask layers when you animate um and if you're new to after effects this might be be a bit hard but it's not impossible you could still do this it doesn't matter it might just take some more time than say if you used after effects for a longer portion of time but if you want to try it go ahead anyone's able to do it so okay so i'm gonna explain okay the one thing i will explain is how I masked things around the mouth because the image that I used for, or most of the time the images that I used are like, they're images that don't show the tongue or both the top and bottom rows of teeth. And when you speak, um, usually you, you show certain portions of your mouth, like you'll open your mouth a certain way. So certain, like your teeth will show your bottom teeth will show, your top teeth will show, your tongue will show. So for this image, I had to do a mask for the dark portion of the mouth, which is like, you know, the back of the mouth that you can't really see. So that's one of them. Then I had to do um, a mask for the tongue, which is not there. So I had to just make a circle and then color it like relatively the color that I thought um or that i think that a tongue is um and then i had to mask bottom teeth which is just like a semi um circular rectangle that i will color fully white later and then and the top set of teeth which were showing but i still had to like shape it the way that i wanted it to be but it was like the same as the bottom row essentially the same shape and then I had to after that I had to mask the bottom lip and I had to start like the area that I started um when you mask the the lips it's like masked in a way where you start in the corner and you go along like the line because usually it's like a the mouths and like um webtoons or in any illustration or drawing it's like a black outline so you mask along the outline and then you go around and you're gonna mask like a big portion of where his skin the skin tone is where the skin is and you're gonna do the same for the upper lip as well and all okay so i'll explain how i colored it okay so for the first mask that I did, where it was just a, a circle, I color all of this black. Because it's the portion of the mouth that you can't see, so like the back of the mouth. And then after that, we're coloring the tongue, and I had to just choose... Um, some variation of like a shade of red or maroon and then I just colored it with a brush and then for the teeth I just got white and then colored it for both the bottom and the top for the for the bottom lip and the top lip just use the eyedropper tool to select the skin tone that it, it is, and then just color it. Okay, so after you're done coloring all the portions of the mouth, um, this part, this next part's kind of 
like a um kind of hard to do right here I renamed I renamed the layers because it kind of helped me better usually I don't rename the layers but this it's usually easier if you rename the layers especially for like mouth animations like especially for talking animations um so I'm just renaming layers and then what I do after I rename all the layers is I'll go to I'll click the puppet pin tool and I'll begin to make uh I'll begin to drop pins along the edges of the of the areas and on the lips I put it all against the black outline for the bottom and top lips because we're gonna make we're gonna have to keyframe um the pins. And you may have to add multiple um, pins, puppet pins, because sometimes when you when you only have a few, it'll make it look really weird. So what I usually do, um, so when I do talking animations, it's usually to a song, like say they're like, they're like kind of mouthing the words in the song. So you could keyframe the parts in your audio that have like where where the where it changes like where the wording changes And usually when I do math animations I'll look at a math chart online Um you don't have to use one in particular but as long as it has like you know, all the letters that you need to mimic. But when you do this, it's kind of like a, a guessing type of thing. You kind of have to just trust the process because you're making keyframes where you think they, they're supposed to go. Because I can't really, I can't really tell you where they're supposed to go because it all depends on what song you're using, or what music. But, um, with the keyframes on the null object, same goes for in my last tutorial. Um, make sure when you have the keyframes, make sure you open the layers and you open the puppet pins and you click on you highlight all the layers, right click, and then you change the keyframes to easy ease so that way it's smoother. And this process is kind of like time consuming because you have to match the keyframes on all of the mouth layers. Okay, so when you're trying to figure out how the mouth is supposed to move based on like the song lyrics, you're gonna have to look at mouth charts, and if you want, you could look at yourself saying the words in the song to get like a better idea, because then you could say it like slowly and see how your mouth moves based on what you're saying. Because sometimes the mouth chart alone isn't enough to like really um, help you figure out how you wanna keyframe your layers and stuff like that. So you're going to have to keyframe basically or practically all the layers, except usually the the black layer. That one you don't really have to keyframe. For the bottom lip and the top lip, you're keyframing the puppet pins that you added. Um, for the teeth and for the tongue, you're basically just keyframing position and scale. And usually you wouldn't really need to use scale, but the reason why I had to um, keyframe uh, put keyframes on scale is because sometimes it would go out like it would show the teeth where it wasn't supposed to like say the uh 
I moved the teeth down in position, and it made the teeth show at the bottom of the lip, like all the way at the bottom, where I had masked it. Like, it's not supposed to show there, so I'll have to make it smaller. It's kind of a confusing process. I don't know if I'm explaining this well, but... When you're done using the puppet pins and keyframing the puppet pins and position and scale on all your layers, again, make sure to right click on all of your keyframes, like highlight them and right click and make sure they're all easy ease. And then after that, you can make a new layer. And I make a new layer and I attach all of the uh, masked mouth portions to the new layer and then on the new layer. I will keyframe scale because usually, usually when people talk, when there's a certain letter in a word you say, your mouth will either expand or it'll close. Like when you say O, oh, your mouth becomes smaller, or at least your lips kind of make a the shape of a circle, and it looks relatively smaller than when you say um, like S, S, your mouth kind of opens more, opposed to when you say O, and it goes, O, it kind of closes more. So for, like, stuff like that, like, O, if my character is saying, like, a word with O in it, I'll make a scale, uh, keyframe to make the mouth look smaller at that one part. And after that, if it's, if they say something that makes their mouth um, look bigger, then I'll just make another keyframe to make it look bigger. And it just, it helps the animation look more natural as opposed to not adding like a null layer to make it big and small and stuff like that. But that's basically the whole process, to be honest. It's kind of it's kind of confusing, but there's not really a right or wrong way to do it. And I can't really tell you how exactly to do it because it all depends on how or what song you're using. So you kind of have to trust the process and what you think and how you think the mouth is going to move on a certain word. Um, but yeah, I would say just Look online at mouth charts to see how your mouth moves when you say certain letters in a word. And also, if you want, you can look at yourself in the mirror and say the words so you can see how your mouth works when you say that word that you're trying to um, animate to. 
yeah but that's it um if you have any questions um feel free to comment them i'll try to answer as many as i can i i get a lot of questions from you guys and i'm sorry if i'm ever late to answering the questions um but yeah